No wasps and England legend has secured as many caps as our first guest tonight. In fact, no one in the history of English rugby has ever played uh, more top flight games for their country. A whopping, wait for it, 137. <laughs> I was expecting that. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, isn't it? So please give a very, very warm welcome. You can clap again now for Rocky Clark. <laughs> Welcome to Rugby Tonight. You've Thank not been on before, have you? No, 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 it's first great time. to see you. Right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna read a few things that you've done doing your career, if that's all right. Four World Cups, you've obviously won a World Cup. Uh, most capped English rugby player of all time, just said that. Most capped front row player in the world. Now we could go on, but we just haven't got enough time. <laughs> we should clap that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's obviously been a career kind of littered with landmarks. Um, is there one that, that stands out? Is it difficult to choose one or is it pretty obvious when you've won a World Cup? Yeah, I have to say it's pretty, pretty obvious that winning the World Cup was the best day of my life and it's something that I've, I've wanted to achieve all of my life. Um, but there's some you know, close seconds. Uh, beating New Zealand out in New Zealand was awesome after 16 years uh, in their own backyard. Um, and then winning Six Nations and everything. So it's been, a, it's been a great career and I've loved every minute. And I'm sure you've made lots of friends along the way. I've got a bit of a surprise for you now. Here's a couple of your friends that have recorded some messages for you. Rocky, Rockstar, Clark. Sometimes words like legend, inspirational, get banded around far too easily. But when describing you, this is exactly what you are. Dedicated, hugely determined, devoted to the cause unconditionally loyal you've given everything for yourself and you've given everything for your teammates around you and that is the epitome of an english red rose i'm proud to have called you a teammate i'm proud to have played alongside you i'm proud to call you my friend no arrogance zero sense of entitlement just 100 percent rock star you're a hero of the game and you've gone down in history Aww. It's amazing, like, hearing everything that you've achieved that Sarah's just listed, hearing how everyone feels about you, but life could have been very different for you. Um, I was chatting to one of your friends earlier, a very good friend of yours, Daniel Waterman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she said that you actually, when she first met you, you were a bouncer in Plymouth, is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whilst I was at uni, I was uh, a bouncer. Um, and yeah, life, life could have been different. Um, I was quite a big chunky monkey back, uh, back in the day. And um, it, was, it was taking up rugby and getting the opportunity and then really realising my potential and playing for England that actually put me on a really good path and one I've enjoyed. And forts are off the doors onto the pitch. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Um, we have to talk to you about um, the big news a couple of weeks ago, the announcement of um, uh, England Pro Contrast being given to, what, 28 players? I think that is huge news for the women's game, isn't it? You can't underestimate underestimate what kind of news that was. Oh, it's massive. So we, uh, we went professional for a short period um, in the lead up to the World Cup and that, the difference that just made for you to have rest and recovery rather than going off to work. But this is continuous now. Yeah, exactly. It? So yeah. the biggest thing is that now it's actually, it's going to stay and it's not going to bounce in and out and we've, we've got that opportunity for the girls to, to give everything to it rather than having to worry, balance work and, and training and uh, yeah, not make those decisions. Well, it's brilliant to say that women's rugby is in such a good place, but let's not hide away from it. It's still a long way to go, whether that's in attitude, whether that's in finance and support, but this is a brilliant step. And I know that you've suffered some problems in, in, in your career as well. Yeah, so back in the early days, um, you know, we, we had to pay for our own kit or pay for weekends, uh, training weekends, etc. So it's it's evolved massively, um, and it's really positive where where we are. But we, it's still we need to keep progressing, get the, get attitudes changed. I was um, coaching the Chesham lads, and uh, one time the referee came over to me and, and thought I was a physio um, <laughs> as opposed to the coach. Um, also. Another time, my uh, housemate was standing behind the ropes with a, with, a, with a beer and he went up to him and assumed he was the coach as opposed to me who was on the pitch warming the lads up. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's changing, um, but, yeah, it still needs to, 
change yeah. attitudes. Well, it's brilliant in terms of we've got the Tills 15 now, in terms of your England women, the Red Roses, so successful. So do you, do you just think it's something which is just ingrained into or just hardwired into society at the moment, which perhaps they're maybe not as accepting and perhaps not pushing the women just as much as, as the men? We're getting there, but, yeah, it's it's something that we need to keep banging the drum, yeah. to be honest, um, and um, showing really good games of rugby. Uh, Tyrrell's has been a massive step in changing attitudes, getting getting the women's game out there, um, all the women's games going on, um, uh, telly and computer has just been really good. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going in the right direction, but we still need that little bit more back in. Well, you're still playing. Should I say what, what age you are? Or should I uh, lead you <laughs> no, over to age? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you're still playing, you're still, you know, you're still playing well. I'm just thinking post-rugby, um, I was reading an article on the way up today and it said one of your ambitions is, is, is to possibly be one of the first women to, to coach in, in the Premiership or just a, a very high kind of level. Is that still the ambition? Yeah, um, it's, it's something that I want to be the best I can as a coach. I've been the best I can as a player and I now want to do it in my coaching career um, as well. So it's something, watch this space, we'll see how we go. I mean, how far off are we from having a female coach, do you think, in the Premiership? Oh, well, hopefully it will happen in, in the next five, ten years, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and, and there's no way why it shouldn't, to be honest. You know, you've got uh, coaches like Giselle Matthews, uh, like, just doing so well at WAS, and she's, she's been an inspiration, and, and hopefully we can, uh, I can follow her footsteps.